So uh, I didn't own a video game system until I was around seven or eight years old, the Nintendo GameCube. If I wanted to play video games before then, I had to wait until we were over at my aunt's house, who owned a Super Nintendo with two games, as far as I remember. Paperboy 2, which I was awful at, and Super Mario World, which I was also awful at. The difference was that the dogs in Paperboy 2 made me very uncomfortable, so I didn't like playing that game. I spent most of my time replaying World 1 and Super Mario World over and over, never really good enough to make it past the first boss. Eventually, I got better at games, though not by much, and when I got a Game Boy Advance and was able to play the handheld version, I was able to beat the game finally. Probably took me around three or four years before I actually saw it through to the end. The PSA, I wasn't a good gamer, my parents were very disappointed in me. Since then, Super Mario World has stuck with me as a game I regularly go back to and play, probably four to five times every year, whenever I recently beat a long game and want something small to hold me over. It's colorful and vibrant, and is probably the nicest looking 2D Mario platformer I've played, even compared to the newer games like New Super Mario Bros. Each world feels very unique, and unlike the previous games, it doesn't follow some strict world setup. For example, the third world is this sprawling cavernous area, while the fourth area consists of a bridge. The levels vary in both design and size, which I love. SMB3 had a flat terrain for every world, and the games before didn't even have overworlds. This game feels like you're actually exploring a vast landscape, with different shapes and environments, and that's what really sets this apart from its predecessors. This is also the first Mario game to have secret exits hidden within the level that aren't just warps or shortcuts. There are hidden levels, and even two extra worlds called Star Road and Special World that are filled with crazy and random levels to try out, many of which are significantly harder than the rest of the game. But on a smaller scale, there's plenty of hidden areas and fortresses that you can access by exploring the levels a little deeper. It's an added incentive to check all the pipes, search for hidden vines, and go through every door. As far as power-ups go, the game didn't do anything particularly special. Instead of the Tanuki suit, this game has the cape, which admittedly does feel like an upgraded version. The cape spin feels way better, and it allows you to fly indefinitely, making it great for cheesing through certain levels at a risk of accidentally falling into a pit. However, it didn't do too much else in the way of power-ups, and actually lacked some of the cooler ones that SMB3 had, including the hammer and frog suits, and no Karibo shoe to strut around in. It did, however have Yoshi. I mean, do I need to say more? He's just such a cute little dinosaur baby. I love him so much. In all seriousness, he's great. He can eat things, step on things Mario can't, and in a pinch, you can sacrifice him to the Mario gods to get an extra jump onto a platform, a fan favorite in Mario Maker levels. This is the first Mario game to really star Yoshi, and he's been an absolute crowd favorite ever since then. Uh, let's see, what else? Music? Great, don't need to talk about that. It's a Nintendo game, they all have amazing music. Uh, it also has multiplayer. You take turns trying to beat the different levels in the game. All stuff that the older games had in them. This game isn't just great for itself though, as weird as that may sound. It has spawned a non-stop train of ROM hacks from random quirky ones to these insanely hard Kaizo levels that only top level players or machines can beat. There are people that are literally making a living with thousands of fans competitively playing 2D Mario games. And that's about the coolest thing in the world to me. Guys like Penga and Bar are known for making insanely tough levels for people to play, and there are tournaments held to see who can race and get through these ROM hacks the fastest. And in fact, GDQ, a major speedrunning event, sometimes even hosts runs of these Mario ROM hack games, almost legitimizing them as real games. This is something Mario World holds over all other 2D Mario games. ROM hacks do exist for other games like SMB3, but they pale in comparison to both the quality and quantity that Super Mario World ROM hacks have. I don't think there's a point in debating which original 2D Mario platformer reigns supreme. They're all special in so many ways, from legendary soundtracks and design to putting the 2D platform genre on the map. Super Mario World, in my opinion, gets credit for putting the Mario games on a more social level, and this game plays such a vital role in the community that exists today. It's an amazing and outstanding game, both the vanilla version and the ROM hacks that followed. Do I even give a game like this a rating? Whatever, 10 out of 10 stars, it's an awesome game.